And now, and now for something completely different. Ah! Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show. Presented by RIA Advisors. And welcome to The F Show. No, it's financial. Financial Fitness Friday. It's a lot a lot of Fs. Welcome. The triple F. Yeah. I don't know. I choked on an F. Mitch Rosso, Danny Ratliff, CFP. Glad you're here. Well, it's uh, Dow Futures a week. We're anticipating uh, the employment report, Danny. Right. Going to see what that, where that stands. Yesterday was a terrible day for banks. Lose billions in value. Uh, SVB Financial Group. Silicon Bank, I think they lost, I don't know, they sold a big bond portfolio. You know, again, listen, as rates go up, things are going to break. We're going to see cracks, and, and we don't know yet where the damage is. As the liquidity drains from the system and the cracks start to appear, some of those abysses companies are going to fall into. Investors are going to fall into. So we're going to wait and see how that looks. You know, Danny, if this number comes in as anticipated or worse than anticipated, we might see a rebound here uh, this morning. But so far, down. I mean, they're off the lows, off 95 points. S&P Future is down six, almost seven. Well, I think, you know, we, we've been looking throughout the week at, you know, continuing jobless claims, mm-hmm. looking at the jolts numbers. Um, today is going to be a really important number. And, you know, yesterday, I think we wouldn't have had the day that we had had SVB not came out and, you know, was such a, you know, kind of fire sale in so many stretches. Because I agree. This was something, and look, it's brought all financials down. The interesting thing is that historically in this environment, financials will typically do a little bit better because margins are increasing and they're not typically passing this on to their, their, their customers. So it will be not fun, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. I think your head's going to have to be on a swivel. And the problem will be is that it's easy to overreact on a day like yesterday because we look at these big numbers and the numbers, you know, down 500 points. Guys, we're down like 1.6%, 2%. I agree. It's, it's going to be okay. You know, we think, you know, in fact, the market was hitting a, a buy signal. Mm-hmm. There's opportunities here. Now it's probably a little bit oversold. If this number today comes out a little bit weaker than anticipated, we could see a reversal here pretty quick. I agree. I think the market got spooked yesterday, and I understand why. And all this talk about going away from mark to market and all this other stuff. So there was a lot of turmoil around the banks, and that bled into the system. Um, But to your point, markets have been holding up well. You've got to step back and keep your cool. Investors are going to make stupid mistakes here. They're going to knee-jerk and react very quickly. Okay, and the year just started. Okay. The one thing about us, sometimes we get perceived as traders. We are not, okay? We are underweight stocks. We're overweight bonds and cash. We found some really great bonds, 6%. We've got, we got treasury bills, all of that stuff, okay? But we're not going to be panicked out of the market. We have indicators that we follow. We follow them on a weekly basis. We go with what the indicators say. It's pure. It's unemotional, okay? Take your biases out of it. Take what your thoughts are that the whole world's going to heck. Okay, you got to step back and think logically. And I know that's tough. So as the Fed keeps raising rates, there's issues. But to Danny's point, right, you, you, you just, you, we have hit buy signals in markets. Markets have held up here, okay? And yeah, we're underweight. That's absolutely true. And if we have to get more underweight, we will. But we're not going to let, we're not just going to let the short term day to day trading do that for us. We follow models and indicators to do what we do. I get a lot of emails from people, Danny, and not just clients that are so emotionally wrapped up in the day to day. And recency bias overwhelms them so much. They have become great contrarian indicators of what to do. If I've got people telling me to buy, then I know I shall probably be selling and vice versa. So 
it, it, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It's human nature. We're not, we're not designed to invest. Our brains are not set up for it. Well, it's counterintuitive, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we want to head to the bunkers when things are bad, and it, it, rightfully I understand why. Um, you know, we're talking about people's livelihoods, their security. You've worked hard your whole life to accumulate wealth, and then to see it disappear at any point in time is difficult. And so on the flip side, though, we also have to be cautious Mm -hmm. and not get way over our skis, which is easy to do because when things are great, everybody wants to jump in. And and albeit many times, it's way too late. And then we're way too aggressive. And then you see a pullback, and and that's when people begin to panic. But look at yields. You know, this week we've had Jerome Powell out two days in a row saying Mm -hmm. we are going to have to be more hawkish. We're going to have to keep rates you know, be probably raise rates more and keep them higher for longer to fight this inflation. And he has been saying that, hasn't he? Danny says the market hasn't listened, but yeah, I mean, he hasn't, hasn't been changed. Pretty, he hasn't changed. He's but, banging the drum a little bit more, but he hasn't changed. But even with that, the market hasn't responded how you would typically think that they would with this. And yields, for that matter, 10 years down. It's down at 3.85. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen it almost at four. Just as of earlier this week, it was, in, you know, even yesterday, it was at 3.9 and change. Mm-hmm. 3.98 the day before. I think longer term, markets are starting to, the bond markets anyway, are starting to understand that the Fed is going to have to orchestrate something more than a soft landing. Is there something between a hard and a soft landing, Danny? Is it a semi-soft, semi-hard? What is it? I mean, it's going to have. I mean, what kind of landing is it? I, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, well, where where are we considering? I think most people judge this so by by equity markets, right? I, yeah. I, and and I, so you're down. You would. Yeah, bonds down 13 last year. S and P down 18. Uh, Nasdaq down 32 in 2022. Is that what most people would consider a soft landing? I don't think so. I, I don't think so either. And it doesn't mean that this last year and this year are going to be the same because I have some people that will tell me. Oh, it's going to be the same thing this year. We're going to be down another twenty percent. And I'm like, well, why? What's telling you that? What? Are, give me, give me your data. What are you showing? What are you thinking? Oh no, no, I just know it. Oh, okay. Magic eight ball. It's the magic gut ball you're talking about, right? I'm not listening to that. All right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. But the point is, you're not going to make investment decisions based on what your gut is telling you to do. Okay. Have some yogurt. Get some probiotic in there. Get healthy. Your gut's telling you something that may not happen, all right? That's all I'm going to tell you. It's really, people will start to lose it here, and I understand. Or you're going to look at your portfolio, and you're going to focus on that one position that's in the red, even though everything else looks fine. You're going to focus on that one position, and that's the position as opposed to holistically looking at the portfolio and looking at how it's the behavior of it through a cycle, you're going to focus on that one darn position. I mean, you got to step away. Because most likely the decision you're going to make is going to be wrong. Okay? This market can turn on a dime. As soon as information, this market wants to go higher, and this information is a little weaker than anticipated, things will turn quickly. You just can't get all out of the market, all in, all out, all in. Don't do it. Go ahead and buy yourself 5% treasuries and go go sit, a, go sit in a restaurant, go see a movie, relax, take a breath. Okay, we get back. We're going to talk about, hey, you're going to have to retire at 70? You might be forced to. We'll be right back. We'll talk about it. daily investment news you can use delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com the real investment show youtube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access now with the new and improved before the bell reports candid coffee and lunch and learn replays plus each day's radio shows like technically speaking tuesday financial fitness friday and the latest analysis from lance roberts and michael lebowitz subscribe and bookmark our youtube channel for the real investment show or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com realinvestmentadvice.com 
Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN, or again, simply online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Back. Welcome. So Danny and I usually advocates for Social Security recipients to wait until age 70. Yes, obviously everybody's situation is different. We look at claiming strategies. We want to make the best decision for you to manage longevity risk because that's what Social Security is. It's longevity risk insurance. And people will say to us, well, I'm not going to live that long. I'm going to die at this age. And I'm like, wow, again, the magic eight ball of life. Let me ask you a question. What if you live? What if you live longer than anticipated? There are so many changes that are going on in the health industry, especially the preventative health industry. Forget the medical industry itself, but how to get healthy, stay healthy. Ways to keep you healthy. So waiting till 70 to take Social Security, especially if you have a spouse that hasn't paid in as much or earned as much and will probably outlive you just based on mortality tables, is the right thing to do. But there's a bipartisan group of senators proposing two key changes they say would encourage more people to wait until age 70 to claim Social Security benefits. So this is a bipartisan uh, group. They sent a letter to the Social Security Administration on Monday saying Americans are confused about their claiming options. Now, and the SSA needs to do a better job at communication. I absolutely believe that. Don't you, Danny? Yeah. There is, I mean, they're getting better. The website, ssa.gov, I will tell you, is not one of the worst websites I've seen. It has gotten a lot better. It has. And there's they, still room for improvement. There is. And there's more transparency explanation of the benefits. But they want to change the way SSA explains claiming strategies. Right? Prospective beneficiaries are presented to the group calls confusing terms, including early eligibility age, full retirement age, delayed retirement credits. Right? They want to, they want to make it easy. Um, at age 62, for example, currently that's called early eligibility age. So under the proposed legislation, that would be changed to minimum benefit age, ages 66 to 67, as full retirement age would change to standard benefit age, and delayed retirement credits would be maximum benefit age. Yeah, frankly, I don't know if those make it easier to understand, <laughs> understand the differences. No. Um, but the claiming decision remains very critical. And if you make a mistake, most likely you're not going to go back and correct it. Or you can't. No, and, and look, I don't believe that that's going to help at all. I think they, the sentiment is good, but yeah, I agree. We're going to change some verbiage. Why don't we just educate people on the verbiage? I mean, listen, I know that there's moving parts with this. And 
that is confusing. You have, you know, PIA, your primary insurance amount versus FRA, full retirement age, um, which really kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, but getting to 70, here's the problem. Most people don't take Social Security early because they want to. It's because they have to. Now, there are times when you know, we hear from people saying, I'm getting all I can out of it. I'm taking it right now. I think that might be the more common, even though, to your point, there are people who actually need it. No, no, no. I don't think that's the more common. I think it's because people need it. Well, think about this. I mean, Oh, because the the way retirement savings are and people just need the money to live. And and what the retirement age is. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people on polls suggest that it's 65, 66 is what most people believe they will retire at, yet the numbers are 62 or 63, depending on which survey you look at. Yeah. So where most people are retiring early, and we know what the numbers are in 401ks and retirement accounts and savings accounts. They're not high. We also know the amount of retirement income that makes up the Social Security makes up for most individuals. And you have more than half the population that's retired right now relying on Social Security for more than half of their retirement income. Yeah, absolutely. So and then we start talking about the other end of it where people who rely on it for, you know, quite a bit more, like 90%. There's a quarter of retirees right now. Mm-hmm. I don't see how that, you know making it 70 and think about what's going on in France right now. They're rioting in the streets for moving from what? 63 to 64, 62 to 63. Yeah. 64, whatever. Thoroughly. But 62 to 64 and they're freaking out. Yeah. But then it's France. I mean, uh, their work week is two days. Well, actually we're headed there. So we're, we'll be France in probably next decade without the, Fresh bread. Um, so, uh, yeah, because, I mean, they're keying off this, this study we talked about, Danny, a couple of weeks ago, the National Bureau of Economic Research study. More than 90% would benefit financially from waiting until age 70 to claim. Um, but only 10% of workers actually wait until 70 to claim. Now, to your point, there will be a lot of people who can't. We try to, we try to do our best to bridge those people that want to take it at 62 because they need to, to wait until at least full retirement age and maybe bridge the gap. There's a way to do it. Um, I can bridge the gap by finding a part-time job. I can bridge the gap by pulling some money out of my retirement account early, which doesn't hurt anyway because I'll be forced to at a certain age anyway by the government. And is it more beneficial to pull money from the IRA based on where market valuations are versus taking Social Security. So sometimes, Danny, we can help people make the leap a little bit to wait to 62 to 67. Um, In the span of time, it's not a lot, and sometimes we can make it work. So at least they get their full retirement age benefit um, and not have to to take it. And and that takes a little work, a little exercise, a little discipline, but we've done that before. But So I think the sentiment's in the right place as far as, to your point, Danny, education. Uh, unfortunately, we're dumbing down all across the, I mean, every time we have to write a piece for the blog, it's always like you use too many complicated words. And then when you ask the system, what are these complicated words? It comes up and group comes up and hello comes up. These are now considered uh, difficult words. So we're going to go be back to mumbling uh, eventually, just mumbling words, or I don't know what we're going to be doing. Sign language. I have no idea. All I know is that the, the apes should finally take over. I am more than willing for Planet of the Apes to happen. What are you, are you sure think? we're not there? <laughs> Where are you, Zira? Can you communicate with emojis only? <laughs> I think you can. I think you can. I think some people do. Some people do. Yeah. Some people do. So, but, but, but getting but I, back to those points. So I think Rich, the sentiment is good. You know, I, I, I agree. But, but listen, 2022 yeah. Employee Benefit Research Institute says that the expected retirement age for workers is age 65, but the median reported retirement age is actually 62. Nearly Mm -hmm. half of retirees, 47%, report that they retire earlier than they expected to, and the main reasons were developing a health issue, disability, or caring for a loved one, which we see often. So Uh, these are not planned events. Nobody plans to get sick. Nobody plans to become disabled. Nobody plans to care for a loved one. But it happens. Life happens. Caregiving is an issue. So they think the senators think that changing the words changes the outcome. 
I, I think it's a step in the right direction, but I think that's strong. That it, to your point, that you got to look at these systemic issues as to why people claim early, and just because you change the words is not changing the situation. I like the fact that they're focusing on it a little bit, um, but I agree with you, Danny. The words are the least of the issue. Well, you have there's to. There's so many to, more. On this, there's the underlying actual meat to the, the 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 issues and dilemmas that we see. Well, and the headline would suggest that they're going to make you wait until seventy. Right. And so right. that's that's right. the bigger picture here is that this is we have to take most of these with a grain of salt, especially any new legislation. I mean, right now we're, we're you and I were talking earlier about Biden's proposal for taxes. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds uh, that that goes through? Well, you aren't going to see me again. I'm going to be in a hole because. <laughs> I mean, the, the odds are slim. The, the odds are. Yeah, it's just a statement to your point about where the mindset is. But yeah, nothing like that. But we will happen. be getting a lot more of these. We're a year and a half away from an election. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. This is going to be something that I would anticipate and expect to hear a lot more of this from both sides in the sense of trying to make a statement and make a, a, a good claim on why they should be elected next year. There is talk, though. We talked about it, Danny. Your taxes are going up, and some of those taxes might be what we call back pocket. They're not your federal income tax. They are Medicare surcharges and so forth, where there's part in this bill, in Biden's bill, to take the uh, surcharge up to 5% uh, from where it is now. Was it 3.8% or Correct. so on the surcharge? So in other words, there is going to be more of a focus to fund these systems, by raising taxes, raising IRMA charges, in other words, these taxes that mean a lot when you're in retirement income distribution mode, which prevents you from falling to the lowest tax bracket, if I do consider these additional charges on top of my federal taxes um, that I know that I, that I complete my tax returns for, right? My taxation on Social Security. These are going to be continuous pressures continuing pressures on your retirement income as we move forward. And that is going to be a challenge uh, overall. So again, some people can't wait to 70. We try to help people bridge the gap. And if you feel that you have to take it at 62 and it's not an emotional decision, but you've, because you're trying to break even or get all out of the system and sticking it to the man, who you're sticking it to is probably your spouse and not in a good way. So you have to think about, can I at least bridge the gap to my full retirement age? How do I get there? Well, you need a financial partner to help you. Look at the ways for you to get to wait at, to at least full retirement age. And I know this audience understands what full retirement age is in reference to Social Security. So when we get back, we're going to talk about women and how never married women are the f fastest growing cohort in the labor market and what does that mean for them financially when we get back here on Financial Fitness Friday. Stay tuned. The Real Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Now with the new and improved Before the Bell reports, Candid Coffee, and Lunch and Learn replays, plus each day's radio show like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, and the latest analysis from Lance Roberts and Michael Leibowitz. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel for The Real Investment Show, or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and Financial Security touches everyone within your organization. 
Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. My wife is traveling this week. Of course, Yellowstone premiered, and I can't watch it till she gets home. Don't send me emails telling me what happened. They were interviewing the girl. She's British. She plays Beth Dutton, this mouthy, aggressive, strong female archetype in the series. But that's my wife's favorite character, obviously. Yeah. The Real Investment Show podcast. Same show, your schedule. My wife tries to emulate her all the time. At realinvestmentadvice.com. She scares me. <laughs> in 1999, a parafiduciary group of financial advisors were busted by corporate giants for trying to operate in their clients' best interest. These men promptly escaped from a high cost margin environment to the Houston Energy Corridor. Today, still excoriated by their former employers, they survive as protectors of others' fortunes. If you have a problem about preserving capital, if no one else can help, and you can find them right here, maybe you should hire the RIA team. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at Stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click ask a question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Now with the new and improved Before the Bell Report, Candid Coffee, and Lunch and Learn Replays. Plus each day's radio show. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. It's funny on the YouTube channel when you read how people try to rationalize taking Social Security early because the system's gone or life expectancy is going to be 50. We're going to go back to 1883 and it's not going to be. <laughs> yes, life expectancy in the short term has dropped off, but go back longer cycle and you'll see that life expectancies and what's coming. A lot of great books on the topic of technology and healthcare and what's coming. You know how they calculate those life expectancy numbers, and they're all basically averages. I'm wondering mm -hmm. how the pandemic results well, have skewed that average. They absolutely did. Absolutely did. But again, it, if, you're, if you have good habits with what's available today, you are most likely going to live longer than you think. Okay? Most people do not have money saved the way, say, people who listen to this show or our YouTube channel. And I will tell you, even people who have, who in our plans, our financial plans are tough, okay? We forward look or forward estimate asset class returns and come up with benchmark return rates that or hurdle rates that people have to meet certain goals, okay? And our plans are designed to be realistic based on where valuations and inflation happen to be. And even those people who come in with high probabilities of success, taking Social Security properly pushes them over the, over the top. It well, creates another level of security. So it doesn't even matter. Even those who have done a great job, Danny, 
we've noticed, without Social Security, uh, their probabilities of success drop off dramatically if they're not doing it properly. Well, and even those that are, that are at 99% probability of success, which is the highest we will get in within a plan, mm-hmm. it does a couple of things, right? So, you know, number one, you think about what the impact is to your spouse if you pass, if you were the breadwinner. You think about the drain it has from financial assets by not getting as much from Social Security. If you have legacy intent, many times the the difference between taking it early and taking it late can be fairly substantial. Mm-hmm. You know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases. And so, looking at those numbers, putting those in the big picture numbers. You know, we always talk about how I hate those old you know commercials that you say. What's your number, your retirement number? What exactly do you need? And for everybody, it's different. It's going to change over time because life happens. But these are numbers that we can look at, assign a cost of living adjustment, get a very good understanding of what this would be longer term. And yes, may it be a little bit different? Of course. Is Social Security going anywhere? No. It'll change. It could be called something different. But looking at the numbers of how many people rely on it, it's it's impossible. Or it, it, I mean, it's not impossible. You, but if it did, imagine the devastation. Whatever you blame it on, it's just a reality. It wasn't supposed to be the pension, the primary pension system, but that's what it's become. I mean, we got to look at it for what it is, right, Danny? And help people make good decisions when it comes to it. All right. If you think you're going to die at 65, take your, you know, spin the wheel. Take it early. Right? So now you have a spouse that didn't pay in as much and she might outlive you. She's going to be really ticked off. She might kick your t- tombstone <laughs> as she lives longer than you and you've just cut her lifetime benefit by at least 25%. That's, that's really your personal decision. We want to help you make good decisions. And again, we come across people who are not healthy. They live alone. They need the money. And by all means, not only do we help them look at taking Social Security early, we help them understand the thresholds to where that, that Social Security benefit is withheld because they're retiring before full retirement age and try to help them. Or we have, I have one client that I work with that makes sure she stays. She works part-time job uh, as best she can. She's not, she's, she's disabled, but boy, she's got a great brain and she knows how much she needs to make to augment that age 62 benefit, Danny, and not have it be withheld. So there's a system that has to go into place if you are age 62 and you still would like to work. But the worst advice we ever get is when we talk with someone who is fully employed, they don't plan to retire to maybe 67, 68 years old, and their broker is telling them to take, take it at age 62, and these are people that are making six figures. Uh, bad decision. That's just poor planning. That's just terrible planning, and that's misinformation. So you got to just keep a level head. Ultimately, you make the decision. We're just here objectively as fidu- fiduciaries to – Lay out the numbers and give you our advice. That's it. Well, and, and these, are, these are problems and issues that we deal with on a regular basis that we have a very good understanding on mm-hmm. and know the numbers behind it. And, and there are going to be times, you know, somebody on the YouTube channel mentioned like, well, why would you retire early if you don't have the money? A lot of times because you have to. You, you You're have out no of choice. work. Yeah. And loved ones need, need care. And we're, we're beginning to see where you see households that have many generations in them. And that's the only way that they're making the numbers work. I'll tell you, it's about two out of every 10 people I talked to had to leave the workforce early to take care of parents, move back into their house, even though they didn't want to move back home or have their parents move back in with them. So, and so they're making the numbers work by getting are, their social security as well. Right. So, parents, so it's just showing you that their parents are living longer. And don't have not prepared adequately for the, the longer life expectancy and now have to take care of them. But what happens to their parents? What happens to them when their parents pass if they don't have any inheritance? Because listen, you know, I, we, I, we I, hear yeah. about all this news of how everybody's getting this great inheritance. We need to raise the estate taxes. I'd like to meet them because most of those people out there are not. Yeah. So I think overall, retirees are going to be single. There's a new trend. 
people don't get married, right? They may live together. But overall, you're seeing a lot of single women that are out there and building wealth. But overall, women make about 83% of what men do in the United States. That's according to the Census Bureau. And then, then you know, there's a motherhood penalty. But even though, even those individuals that are single, there's this wage gap. I think over the next, I may be wrong, Danny, but I think over the next seven to 10 years, I, I think that's going to change dramatically. Um, I just, I mean, I just see the trends. You know, my daughter gives me some information she pulls from the school. You know, you're seeing never married women in the labor force has grown three times faster than the broader labor pool uh, over the de- past decade. Women are waiting longer to get married. Maybe they're not getting married. Maybe they don't want children. Um, they do actually accumulate wealth, even though there's the wage gap better. So, Danny, I don't know. I'm just trying to think about what kind of advice could we give a young single woman who's making a good income. She's not, she's not where she should be. And I don't have an answer for that because I think she should be paid what she's worth, just like a male should be paid what he's worth, right? Shouldn't have anything to do with the gender. Um, but I do think sometimes that I see younger women when I talk to them make better decisions, less emotional decisions, which is ironic, right? But you think about, because people always think, well, women, you know, you're emotional. Well, I don't know. When it comes to money, I see women make better risk-adjusted decisions. They'll have an emergency reserve. They'll look at disability income insurance. And again, I'm painting a broad brush here just based on my experience with younger women that, I, that I'm guiding through their employee, uh, employer benefits packages. Um, so even though they're not making as much, they seem as on a percentage basis they need to be saving more money. And their wealth is growing more exponentially than, say, for men. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I think it's it's this can go for everyone. I mean, you have to start with the basics. You know, not leaving money on the table, making sure you're taking advantage of all the employer benefits that you're offered wherever you may work, mm-hmm. making sure you're you're setting up yourself up with some security. You know, we've been getting a lot of emails here recently. I feel like Rich on uh, through Real Investment Advice, go ask a question mm-hmm. about buying a house. Hey, I want to invest my money, but I'm going to wait and then buy a house this next year. Well, I'm not sure I'd invest that money. Um, Mm -mm. You know, so really Mm -hmm. taking a step back and looking at the hierarchy of savings. And we talk about this all the time. I know you and I beat this drum, but I think it's extremely important to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves first. And before the expenses, the experiences, the material items, the clothes, whatever it may be, all the things that, you know, I'm sure on your phone right now, you're getting emails and notifications that you should go buy this. Something's on sale. Yeah. I think that's where you have to start. And that's for anybody. No, I agree. So this is what's fascinating, Danny. So women who stay single and don't have kids have more wealth than other never married groups. Oh, I don't They're most likely to have more real estate assets than their male counterparts and save more. They're also on pace with married couples when it comes to preparing for retirement. So when you look at the Census Bureau information, they say median family wealth, not average, for single U.S. adults without children, single men, 57,000, single women without children, 65,000. I just see a difference for as long as I've been in this business of women preparing for an uh, adverse situation more than men do or get out of a losing position faster realizing that it's probably not coming back managing risk a little bit better so maybe all us men should be listening more to our significant others when it comes to money you told me michelle is a lot more frugal than you are right yeah taking that dispassionate approach yes is really important and that's a tough thing to do but women, for some reason, I, I feel like they do much better with that. Yeah, when we get back, we're going to talk about financial exploitation of older adults, how much they lose in billions, and how you can help your parents make better decisions when it comes to this. When we get back.
Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Now with the new and improved Before the Bell reports, Candid Coffee, and Lunch and Learn replays. Plus each day's radio shows like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, and the latest analysis from Lance Roberts and Michael Leibowitz. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel for the Real Investment Show. Or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN at realinvestmentadvice.com. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. And now another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. If you're fortunate enough and your parents are still alive, your older parents, I encourage you to go to olderadultnestegg.com. This is a great site. <clears throat> So I want you to understand, one out of every 20 older adults in the U.S. is a victim of financial exploitation, losing an average of 80000 to 186000 Nearly half of these crimes are committed by someone the older adult knows and trusts, like a caregiver or a relative. So it's critical that we protect our older adults from financial exploitation. And this site, <clears throat> oldernestegg.com, uh, this is created by Dr. Peter Lichtenberg. They have worked over a decade to try to prevent financial exploitation and reduce its impact on older adults. They have an interview rating and self-assessment system that helps review financial decisions made by older adults. It's um, these tools, there's training and tools for professionals. I've gone through it um, to give an assessment test. Caregivers, children, even older adults who make financial decisions and are independent should look to these tests and get their scores and understand where there might be some pitfalls in their rationale of thinking. So... This whole website is designed to protect older adults from undue influence, financial mismanagement, and fraud. I have had situations, Danny, over the last decade at least where I can pick up on these when grandparents are talking about how their grandchildren want a house and they're going to help their children, the grandchildren buy this house, even though the grandchild I know is a schlub and is not going to pay the mortgage. And they don't understand the repercussions. They just want to do something good for their family members. And sometimes we have to come in as the bad guys and protect those individuals. Or you have children and parents that live in different states, and they're not really getting a full handle on the caregivers coming in and maybe the financial decisions and how they're being confided in. This website can help these family members detect issues while they're recurring or most 
importantly, before. Yeah, this is a huge problem. And, and I get the point of, you know, we, we have many clients that say, I want to help my children or grandchildren while I'm alive. I want to give them funds now versus later. I want to see them enjoy it. And that's fine. But you need to understand all the ins and outs. And like you mentioned, the financial repercussions can be significant. So we also, we talked to a lot of families about not mortgaging their retirement or their kids' education. And granted, I know everybody wants to, to help their children, and, and ideally, I, I get it. I understand. But this, especially with elders, we, we find this happening more and more. And not just that. I mean, that's just one, and that's probably a more innocent example mm-hmm. of what really goes on. Because a lot of the times what we're seeing is people are getting dokes. They're getting... Uh, scammed in so many different ways. I, mean, I shared with you this morning a, a friend of ours who she's a doctor at 40 years old who was about this close to getting scammed yesterday. Yeah, I read that. That was pretty scary. I mean, that is extremely scary. So think about that. A doctor, 40 years old, smart, gets pulled into this elaborate scheme and it looks like she was saved for not making that decision. So imagine if you're if you're mentally compromised. So what this older nest egg, adult nest egg site does, it allows you, say you are a professional, you're an attorney, you're a financial planner, you're a psychologist, you're a banker, uh, insurance agent, accountant, whatever. You can get certified to give this brief 10 item interview that give, examines one specific financial decision made by an older adult to assess his or her financial judgment vulnerability to theft and scams and whether financial predation has taken place. It's a scoring system created by Dr. Lichtenberg. And there's one there for family and friends. A family and friends questionnaire, 14 questions, multiple choice questions that can be taken again. If my parents were still alive and independent, I would go through these capacity tools. You have a lot of family members using these, a lot of elder adults. This is all free, Danny. These resources that are on this website are free. So when I, you know, when I talked to yesterday, I talked to an adult son who lives out of state. His mom lives out of state. She lives independently. She writes a lot of checks. I'll go through her account a lot of times to see what check she's writing, see if there's anything unusual. But I called him yesterday to talk about this website and said, hey, you know, I think your your mom's making good decisions, but why don't you just go through some of this with her? And he's never heard of this website. So I think, again, it's a hidden gem. I heard about it from a, um, I went to a sort of this, 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 uh, this big, this, party we had they had a party and it was a financial party there was a gathering and there was discussion from this gentleman who was an estate planning attorney and he brought this site up and we just started talking and I picked his brain and I said this is really he says really check this out and I said I've never heard of this and I do try to keep abreast of these things so I want you to take a look at this as a resource now you just might know your parents and just know something is off. What this, is, what this site will also help you do is, well, how do you broach the subject, right? A lot of parents do not want to face the fact that their mental capacities are diminishing. So you have to be diplomat about it, right? And you have to find ways to preserve the independence of that older adult, but provide assistance and awareness. That's why it's important for an older adult who is at least self-aware to take this, the tests that are available, to make sure that they have the mental acuity to make decisions, or they feel like, you know, again, there's a family member pressing them. And I, this is where I come across, Danny, that there are younger family members more likely grandchildren that go around, circumvent the parents and go to the grandparents for financial assistance. That's, what, that's a situation that I 
get? And then I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, let's let's talk about this money you need to lend or how we're going to make this decision properly and how are we going to say no if it doesn't make sense. But what I'm trying to gear up for is and listen to is whether the thought process makes sense. Thankfully, just like you probably do, I have a lot of older clients that will call me first and go through their financial rationale to either lend money or not. And I still find it's intact. But what I've learned on this website from the resources is the cues that maybe things are not right so that maybe I have to call one of the adult children and say, listen, I can give your mom or dad this test if they're willing to. I can provide it to them and to you who then might want to look at a mental health professional to take the next step. And I just think as people get older and are living alone, right? And Brent, Brent, you have, I mean, you have your dad yeah. still lives alone, mm-hmm. still mentally. Recently widowed. I know. Sorry about that. He's, he's doing really well for a gentleman in his situation. But he stays active. Oh, yeah. We can I never mean, get him on the phone because he's <laughs> out in the yard. Out in the yard. He's got a wood shop, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he, I mean, yeah. he, Behind me is this is this this board, but he created the system that holds this thing up. I mean, I mean, he's constantly active. So I thought of Brent when I saw this website too, knowing that there's older people in his family. There's something there that he can look at. There are resources here that are available that you can complete a brief training, complete a family and friends questionnaire, um, get the results, talk to your parents about them. But I think as advisors and estate planners uh, or accountants, as population ages, of course, our demographics obviously are not very good, um, we have to be aware of these cues, don't we, Danny? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that is such, has such a negative impact on, on many when these types of events occur. And not only that, but I think that it diminishes your, comp- your confidence in yourself when it happens, then you start second guessing. And so if you can help protect the loved ones from these types of events, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the more resources and tools you can arm yourself, I think the better. Now, what's cool about this older they have a hub for caregivers, which I really love. They keep track of all the fraud alerts of the latest scams targeting older adults, scammers pretending to raise money for Ukraine, gift card scams during the holidays, romance scams, romance scams among the elderly. Forget the loofah code at the villages. $800 million stolen from 100,000 Americans. There's helpful organization lists. So this family and friends resources for caregivers is instrumental for you if you are a caregiver or know a caregiver at olderadultnestegg.com. So hopefully you all find that helpful uh, as you peruse the internet this weekend. Well, that's it for our Financial Fitness Friday. Lance back on Monday. Hope you all have an incredible weekend. We've got a lot of events coming up April 1st. We'll be talking about it. Uh, We have a Lunch and Learn coming up. Stay tuned for that. You all be good, and thanks again for financial staying with us here on Financial Fitness Friday. Be good.